Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be designing the first page of my sketchbook. This will be the third sketchbook I've ever fully finished. So let's get into the video. I don't have any script for this video, so let's see how this goes. I s did have an idea starting out what I wanted um, my original character to be doing. Now, the last two sketchbooks I filled, I have drawn my original character Lily on the front page. So I knew I wanted to have Lily on the front page. I also knew I wanted her to be in her room and like maybe reaching for something. And so I had a pose in mind. So I went in straight away and I put in this pose. Now I know this pose is very stiff and I am still working on trying to make my poses more fluid but it's better than how I used to draw people which was standing with their arms stiffly by their side like really awkwardly. So I have improved, not much but I have improved. I decided to colour it in with pen first of all. I did not think this was a good idea but at first I apparently did. So I went in and I'm not the best in using pens. I've only been using these watercolour pens since Christmas. So it's been almost a year, but not every single time. So it has, I've not improved that much. Well, my technique has improved a bit. It's not amazing. So it didn't turn out that well. I didn't know what to do with skin because this set does not have a skin tone that is like light enough because all the skin tones are kind of just orange. I also couldn't find a pink light enough because there's no real pastel colours in this kit. This set, not kit, set. So I couldn't find a blush colour and it looked not that great. Also, I changed the colouring of this footage quite a lot. I when I was sketching I made it very desaturated and when I was colouring in I made it a lot more saturated. So after the first round I liked her pose but I didn't like the way I'd coloured it in. So I decided to go in again to try and recreate what I did before like with the pose but I wanted to colour it in a bit better. I also wanted to try and make her look a little less stiff, like she wasn't posing for the camera, more like she was just reaching for it, for what she was reaching for, which is a book. I decided that I'd have her reaching for a book with a beanbag behind her and maybe like some shelves behind her and she's like putting something back or taking something off her shelves. So yeah, and I, had the idea in my head that the writing would be on the spines of these books and you could see it. Not the most believable story, but it kind of worked. So what I decided to do is I bent her arm a bit more to try and make it more fluid, try to move her leg a little bit further up, which didn't look the best because she kind of just looks like she's doing a ballet pose. So yeah. Also, I really need to speed up this footage, it's so slow. But here I am, kind of sketching in the hand. So, but I'm going to tell you a bit more about my OC Lily. So, my OC Lily, she's a model, and the story is, essentially, I'm not great at making poses. They're always very stiff, as I've already said. So... I made my OC Lily a model, so the stiff poses can kind of be blamed on the fact that she's a model, not because I'm bad at drawing <laughs> poses, not just bad at drawing, or whatever. So yeah, that's why she's a model, and I like drawing her a lot, and I created her when I was quite young and her story is rather detailed 
Also, I'm not sure if this is just me, but when I'm drawing, I always create a story for why she's doing this certain thing. And yeah, so the story for this, because I spent like four or five hours on this drawing, um, was that she was in her room and but posting for Instagram. This is where my camera fell. Um, and she, she was just trying to get an aesthetic pose of her like reaching for something and showing off her room because she had just tidied it. And yeah, this is me trying to make my kneaded eraser more soft because it's always so stiff. So then I decided I line art, do the line art in black. Not my best idea ever. And in the final illustration, I did end up going for like a lighter gray to make it look softer. I either don't use line art or try and make a softer line art. So that's why when I was doing Inktober, it felt really weird because I was only using black, which I don't often do. So it was a learning experience that I really liked. This is when I realised that maybe pencils was a better idea. So I decided to go in with pencils. Uh, the problem with using pencils is that you have to lean very hard or it gets very streaky. And I didn't really want to have very harsh colouring in. I wanted it to be very pastel. So the colouring in is very streaky. So yeah, not the best quality. But it was better than what I got with the pens because they were not only streaky, but incredibly blobby and messy. So after I had, oh, this is me trying to blend that out with my colourless blender, which doesn't work very well. But yeah. The, the advantage with pencils is that it is easier to blend the colour, well, I find it easier to blend the colours together and to like put in blush and details. And I find it easier to stay inside the lines. With brush pens, I have a very heavy hand and a very shaky hand, so I end up going all over the place and it doesn't get the best result. I, I wanted, the problem was, every time I redrew this pose and Lily, it got stiffer, which is one of my problems. The first time I draw something, I'm quite happy, but I will mess up a couple of times and then I want to redraw it so to stop me messing up, but it always gets stiffer and stiffer. So I need to figure out a way, out a way to make it less stiff. That's why I really want to try digital art because, like, I could obviously like press a back button if I messed up, and it would be easier to fix my mistakes on the original drawing. So maybe it wouldn't be as stiff, but I don't know. I tried turning her head to face the camera more, and thought that looked didn't look great. So I turned her head back. I did the sketch for the actual page off camera because I knew I had way too much footage and also that I would be a lot more stressed if the camera was there than if I, I was just off camera. But I did the line art on camera. I used a Stether fine lining pen in grey and went over all the lines. I always find line art so boring because all the lines are already there. I always like when I finish a sketch it's very detailed and it's already there so I don't mess up with the line art but then I find line art so boring so I'm literally just copying exactly where my lines are before and because my hands are shaky I always mess up and it's that entire problem so yeah I cut out most of the line art because that's incredibly boring and then I started colouring in this is where I realised this is going to take forever and it's going to be incredibly streaky. But now I started, so I guess I just have to keep going. I really, I really like using um, reference photos and I find it really helps with my poses and stuff. But I can never find great reference photos of exactly what I want. Because I'm very particular about these kind of things. So I always want this exact pose and I can never find it on Pinterest. So what I end up doing 
was taking really weird photos of myself for reference photos. And then when people go through my camera roll, you see a lot of random photos of me doing weird poses and weird faces. I mean, it helps, but like, I look, it looks really weird. So, my OT, I've always imagined her as a very over the top kind of person. Like, she loves dressing up for everything. She'll, she'll wear dresses to every occasion. She'll do strange things and just look like she's going to a wedding and she's just literally going to the shops or something. Also, I always wanted her to have really light blonde hair naturally and be very, very slim, just naturally. I also, she is quite a young, like, teenager, I'd say. I'd say she's about 14 or something. That's just me making things up. I'm, I've never actually sat down and given her an exact age. I'll draw her at different stages. I'm really bad at making people look the same. All my illustrations tend to have different faces. They look like completely different people. So, uh, or they like look older or younger. So I, I never really just give her one age. She'll, it'll just depend on when I'm drawing her. I wasn't sure if to give the, to give Lily tights or just to have her bare legged because in the reference photo, I was wearing tights. But I wasn't sure if it really fitted in with what she was doing because I felt like she probably would be bare light. But I ended up going with tights because I felt like it. I decided that I'd write Welcome to My Sketchbook on the books in black so it stood out more. And I'm glad I did that because it did help a bit, you can actually see it. I also, also the teddies, I didn't want to draw books on all the shelves because I thought that was just boring. So I gave her teddies at the back of the shelves. And one of the teddies is actually a teddy that I've drawn in some of my videos before. And I can't remember which one, <laughs> I can never remember the, the name of this, of my videos but I was just sketching around with my pink pen and I sketched this teddy this young girl holding the teddy and I thought the teddy is really cute so I put it in there I'm not sure if you can tell because her arm is obviously covering that that area up but yeah and then I decided to put handbags underneath because obviously she's over the top she's very girly and she likes going out a lot so I did that and I, then I realised I have no clue how to draw handbag. So I had to look up so many reference photos on Pinterest. So now whenever I go into my Pinterest feed, there's just a ton of handbags come up because I was looking up handbags. Also, I'm pretty sure most people have black, white and grey handbags. I'm not sure, but I think they do. But I decided that because Lily's over the top, that she'd have bright coloured handbags behind her. I was also planning on giving her, like putting a row of shoes behind her but then I realised I'm not great at drawing shoes and I do want this to look as good as possible so instead I decided to give her a vase and some perfume bottles down the, at the back there and I, that vase is most definitely wonky because when I do the shelves obviously they do have to go on an angle otherwise they do look really strange but I'm pretty sure the vase should be straight up and not at that angle as well. I I don't know I don't draw backgrounds very often. I feel like the only place I ever draw backgrounds is the first page of my sketchbook. Apart from that I kind of leave the background empty or I put random circles and squares and stuff which I believe is a method I saw on drawing with waffles videos so yeah I decided to put feathers all over the vase to make it more interesting and also because I don't know how to shade a vase and then I was almost finished I did do the bean bag in watercolor and then just added some shading with pencil 
I gave her a pink carpet and did some little fixing things. Well, I fixed some of the details in certain places with darker pencil and I shaded in certain areas with colour to make it a little bit more interesting and a little less plain. And then I was almost finished. I just needed to put the date. I always put the date there so I just know because what annoys me most about when I, my younger self is that I would never put dates on my artwork. So then now I look back and I can't actually remember how old I was when I did that. I would always be like, oh yeah, I'll just remember. I, I, I'll just know that when, what age I was when I did that. And then now I look and I don't remember. So it really annoys me. So now I put the date underneath every artwork and every drawing I do just so when I'm older I will actually know and I look and look back and I was like yeah I was this age when I did that and then I was finished. Right, so if you like this video please like and subscribe and I'll see you next week. Goodbye!